Uh, then let's just well, do a, a clap or something. Yeah, hold I'll give you the clap. So are we restarting? What's happening? Fuck it, I'll fix it in post. <laughs> I'll hate myself for it. Let, let's do a noise. Are you sure? Because so. we can totally restart. We're gonna, we're still going to do a clap sync. I think All the right. harder it is for you, the more you understand my difficulties. And it makes me happy that you understand <laughs> me. No, I do understand you. Of course I do, Toker. <laughs> All right, everybody got their stuff clean. Everybody has empty hands ready to clap. Nope. Okay, see, okay. that's why I asked. Now it's been bright. All right, three, two, one, clap. That's probably the closest it's ever been. And it's the closest it'll ever be. Yep. It's Don't true. say that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Which, uh, Mike Realtek? Okay, cool. All right. Just, sorry, just checking my things that I should have checked before we started recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, uh, the true this professional. Uh, yeah, this mic check is brought to you by Noob Show Episode 20. Gotcha. <laughs> Already funny. starting. As you were saying mic check, your mic peaked. Yeah, real yes. loud. Oh, Show fuck. Episode 20. Right. It does that thing every so often where it switches into the right side of your ear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome to episode 20 of Noob Show. That's where we're starting. Is it? Fuck all that shit beforehand. Yep. Okay. <laughs> there was some real silver in there. Yeah. <laughs> what Bronze at least. What is happening well, with your, your your screen, Noob? What do you mean? What's wrong with my screen? Oh, why is my microphone doing this? It's weird there's, lights. There's some weird homely guy in it. Yeah, you look like a, a bad boot version of Terminator graphics are trying to come through on your forehead, but they're not quite making it. I think what it is is that I still have the thing for green screen selected, but I'm not using a green screen right now. You're just so kind of a green person. Yeah. Yeah, so every so often the sides of my head turn green. I think it's the light from the ears. Uh, so if I cover it up, it goes away. No, it's not gone. Wait, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'm glad this visual joke is uh, <laughs> really paying off. It's not even a visual joke. That's what's so not good about it. Jokes are funny. <laughs> Toker laughed. I laughed at our ineptitude. To, to in, inept, inept. Hey, <laughs> if, we were, if we were inept, then how are we about to be on our first year of doing the podcast, the I main know, show? I know, right? We're getting close. How many do we have cool. recorded right now? 47? Are we doing anything? Why is my microphone doing that thing? Are we doing anything special for it? What are we doing special for it? I've made no plans. Uh, strip poker night. So is it going to be the end of season one and then go into season two because it's the second year? I, don't, I think this, just saying that we've been on a year doesn't mean that it's second season. Not for us. I think the, the exposition dump is technically end of chapter one, start of chapter two. Season one, season two. but I, f I feel like we should plan this out a little bit more. <laughs> then it's not homebrew. If it's not unplanned, it's not homebrew. Incorrect. Yeah. Homebrew is about planning. Yeah, maybe for years, but not this show. Yeah, that's, that's why the detritus part is on the end. That's just, the, yeah. that's just fucking winging it. <laughs> is that not how you play Dungeons & Dragons, Terrence? It is not. So um, we all play Dungeons and Dragons. It is most, mostly not. <laughs> Remember that's you threw in a combat because we just well, we're in the bottom of some place and something just so happened to come through the wall. You shoehorned that combat right in there. It was like a giant badger or something. Oh, there's something busting through the wall, and then we fought it, and then we went right back to doing what we were doing. I have no idea what you're talking about. It sounds like a Kool-Aid man fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's what we need to do, have a one-off where we do nothing but fight old-school mascots. The Kool-Aid man of stone shape. Just avoid the Noid, and you're good to go. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. He has death touch. Uh, mm -hmm. If he touches you, you lose one <laughs> negative level. <laughs> That's why you gotta avoid the Noid. Plan that, sounds... that for your one-shot. You do the one-shots. You... This is your idea. You run with it. You make yeah, it I know. I'm, I'm still currently working on one. Uh, do you have a Troika book yet? It's probably best if you do it with Troika, if you're doing that stupid bullshit. 
I can do whatever stupid bullshit and whatever I want. I'm just saying. You'd have a lot more fun. <laughs> now we're doing Caveman Starfinder. You're welcome. Okay. Caveman Starfinder, you say? How? Yeah, we're going to be a bunch of cavemen with all this space technology we can't use because it doesn't fit in my setting. Okay, cool. Mm. I thought you meant like the opening of 2001 where we're just monkey people terrified of a giant square. I've never seen that. It's like, what was it, Battlefield Earth, where they went from cavemen to fighter pilots in the space of like <laughs> two hours or something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> These mad animals need to be taught. <laughs> Acting! <laughs> I have leverage on you. Uh, that movie's so delightfully terrible. Oh, Lordy. But you love Dutch angles. Quiet you man, a- quiet man animal. <laughs> Don't you quiet me. <laughs> I learned to read in five minutes. Did you? In the movie, yeah, I think he learns to read fairly quickly. It's, yeah, he, uh, he gets it beamed directly. In it. He gets it matrixed into his brain, but not nearly as cool as the Matrix does it. But when you're watching that terrible movie, that moment seems cool because it's surrounded by so much <laughs> terrible shit. No, you're right. Like It was like a tiny little piece of world building in this totally shit sandwich of a movie. <laughs> do you guys have a favorite movie quote? I was thinking about this the other day. Nah. Like just a quote from the movie you constantly think about. I mean, I feel like that's all I think in is like movie quotes most of the time. TV quotes. Something. Pop culture. Because the one that continuously still cracks me up to this day is Brokeback Mountain is I wish I could just quit you. Really? In that, <laughs> that one? That's the one. It's, it's just the, it's the way he delivers it. It's just the crying gay cowboy butt sex. That really just sells it for me. Mm-hmm. It's Pride Month. Be celebratory. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here on Pride Month, we're going to have Terrence on every week in June. Oh, God, kill me. <laughs> now that I said it, it's a fact. <laughs> here's, a fun, here's a fun gay fact. I'm terrible at, at pinpointing who gay people are. Because I don't think about it. Uh, I didn't know Terrence was gay for, for many months, sitting at the table with him until he blatantly told us a really gross gay story that he was involved in. And I was like, oh, that's a gay man. Was it, what gr- is, was it gross? What is this story? It was I mean, gross. It was I don't the, remember the, the story. ingrown hairs. Oh, yeah, and it was a gross story. It grossed yeah. me out. That's why I told it. Yeah. Well, let's hear it. Let, let Toger finish his story. His thing. No, that was fuck. that was it. That was that's, oh. uh, yeah. I, mean, I said before I didn't know Terrence was gay until his boyfriend walked out and kissed him. Yeah. <laughs> I work. I was working with a guy. I'll give you time to, to work on your story there, Terrence. I was working with a guy uh, for many weeks, and he asked me for. Uh, he said he needed uh, a Saturday off, which in food and bev, getting a, getting a weekend off can be pretty difficult. And I was just I, I was fine with him taking the day off, but I was just like, why? You know, and he's like, I want to, I'm going to the parade. And I said, what parade? And he said, the, the gay pride parade. And I said, why? And he said, cause I want to be in the parade. And I was like, why do you want to be in the parade? He was like, cause I'm fucking gay asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> he was like, right. you really didn't know. I was like, I had no clue. You should have said, no, you're fucking gay asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It took many, many weeks. All right. Well, all right. Your turn. Oh, I didn't want to tell this story. It's super embarrassing. Yeah, and I told the story about how I had a girlfriend spit Reese's Pieces into my mouth. It's but your turn. This is nothing close to that. According to Mahogany, it is. Oh, Mahogany's going to fucking get up and walk away, I'm sure. Okay, so... <laughs> so, uh, I used to, like, get around a bit. Hold back on. when I... Was- Back when I was thinner and, and, and more adventurous. And um, I woke up one day and I found this ring of, um, let's call them boils, like zits, but bigger and more painful, around the entire circumference of my cock. <laughs> <laughs> Like it was awful. Like it was it looked like a toad. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't on the dick anywhere. It was just around it. Oh, you were fucking a toad. That's what it was. I, I, I gave you. <laughs> and like, 
I, I started to panic, freak out, you know, like, this could be anything. This could be a, some sort of fucking venereal disease. My dick could be falling off at this very moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, I ask around. <laughs> I made one guy who's a nurse kind of have a look at it. This was Joe, by the way. Oh, no shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, I don't know. You should go see a doctor. <laughs> this is as close as I want to get to my friend's penis. <laughs> But it definitely isn't going to suck it looking like that. And, uh, <laughs> and this, t- like, this, is, this is like several days in when all the boils had burst. Mm. And, oh, and it yeah. had become a horrifying ring of scabs around mm. my dick. All the way around my dick. And um, so I, I finally went to a doctor and I'm like, hey, doctor. <laughs> and she's like, uh, what are you here for? I'm like, um. So, okay. I got ring dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have a venereal disease and I need you to look at it. She's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let me flash back. Uh, about a week prior, I had hooked up with some dude that was like, really wanted it rough. And you know, like, like, apparently he must be expecting somebody way bigger than I was. Like, well, he wants, he wants it. Like, he's like deeper, harder. Like, ah, he's like, ah, I'm like, okay. So, you know, I put my all into it. Like, all, like, all, I felt like I shattered my pelvis trying to fuck this dude. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then that, put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. Say that again. Say it slower. Do it, say it again. <laughs> so I tell the doctor this story and I'm like, I think, I think this guy gave me a venereal disease and she, she, Steals herself and has a look, and she says, oh, okay. <laughs> and she says, well, okay, um, ha- have you, you said you had a rough sex? I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, this happens to women way more than it happens to men, but <laughs> apparently if you have sex that's too rough, you can impact the hair follicles around your... <laughs> <laughs> so every one of those boils and scabs was an ingrown hair <laughs> fucking too hard <laughs> Jesus. and I, I i finally i finally called the dude back i'm like and i was just relieved i was laughing deliriously and i told him the whole story and he gets real quiet and says so you thought i gave you a, v- a vd i'm like yeah but you know you didn't you didn't you didn't it's it's funny he's like uh, bye. And he never talked to me again. <laughs> First off, the la- if I have something on my dick, the last person I fuck, I don't care who they are, I think you gave me something. That's how that works. That yeah. makes sense. Uh, you can't get offended by that. You got very offended by yeah, that. It's either that- you or the fact that I go to every public restroom and just drag my scrotum across the seat. So, like, you know, there's only one person I can talk to about this and blame, and it's you, the human being, not all the per- public urinals I've seen mm-hmm. in the past three days. Have either one of y'all ever shit in a urinal? <laughs> That's going to be a big, giant no for me. Uh, not, I figured no for me. Not that I remember, mm-hmm. but I drink, I used to drink a lot. That was it. That was the entire question. Okay, yeah, that was my entire answer. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've been on staff at a place where it happened, <sighs> and I was like, thank God it wasn't me that, that had to clean bathrooms today. But um, <laughs> see, I thought about forming a professional shitting team. Why? Why, a, <laughs> why am I on this episode? <laughs> yeah. Also, that. So far, you have the grossest story. Yeah, gay pride. The grossest story, period. Like, yeah, oh, like... It's a gross story. I, I told you <laughs> it was going to be a gross story it. from the second I started it. Mm-hmm. But I thought about getting me and like nine other friends, and then what we do is we go around Charleston restaurants, and then we'll all go to the bathroom and shit and not flush, and then just leave. That's the worst thing that you've ever said. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the worst thing that you've I, ever said. I, I, don't, I don't think Most I want... Most of the people that have to clean those bathrooms make $2.13 an hour. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> You're joking, right? <laughs> I'm canceling this show and yeah, you. You are yeah, canceled. Let me find nine other people that are going to shit in a toilet back to back. I just thought it was a funny idea to have a mountain of shit out of a toilet. No, I've yeah, do seen that, at that your house. before. I've seen it before. I've been to Bonnaroo twice. So I've seen it before. Each time, porta potties with shit above 
the seat. <laughs> like, That's high disgusting. above the seat. And then, that has like, to be a challenge at that I point. I remember the, like, one, the one where Dave Matthews played. That's like, a the show, show. The show got <laughs> rained out. It was the last show of, of Bonnaroo. So, like, everybody went to it because it was the last show. And, like, it got rained out to the point where, like... It was like maybe three feet of water in front of the porta potties, oh, no. and like the horses, the cops on horses had just been walking around with horses that just shit everywhere. So you're just walking through shit water, whether it be <laughs> human shit or horse shit. And I think I'm pretty sure that was my last year, so I was like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm done with that. This is a dookie focused film music festival. Yeah. I'm not going back. So I went, I think, in '03 and '04, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm done. Mm. Why do cops still use horses? I mean, like, why? Did we did we see like there there's some places that are discontinuing the canine? Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, good on that. Good because they're they're terribly ineffective. Like mm-hmm. they bark yeah. at whatever they want them to bark at. As someone who's known several stoners and they get pulled over with a dog, apparently the dog sitting down is a signal. <laughs> it doesn't oh, yeah, tell a dog. A signal. To, yeah, it's like the dog gave the signal, sir. Yeah. It's like, what what's the signal? You never fucking tell anybody. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's cheating. I Same had, with unmarked cars. I had the uh, I got the dogs in my car once, uh, and I smoked weed, but I knew I didn't have any weed on me. My 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 buddy Josh was in town, and we were driving to Goose Creek to have dinner with my aunt, and she lives in a, uh, a very cop centric area of Goose Creek. So I knew like don't bring any drugs, you know like. I'm going to my aunt's house anyway. It's not like, you know, we're going to get fucked up. We're just going to eat dinner and then go back to the house. And this cop follows me. As soon as I get off the interstate, follows me, follows me, follows me. Finally pulls me over for, for something stupid. Um, and he's, he's just bullshitting with me basically until the canine shows up because I'm in a, a car that's uh, not worthy of the neighborhood. You know, it's old shitty 1990s Chevy Cavalier. It's a stoner car. And I'm in a nice neighborhood. <laughs> And um, the guy with the canine is such an asshole, and the dog is just going all through my fucking car, which is fine because I have dogs. I don't care about the dog being in there. I just I want this to be over with because I know I'm I'm clean. And he's he gets out and he's like, so the dog made a signal like there's something under that seat. You've got drugs under that seat. And then I remember <laughs> that I'd bought a big bag of dog food a few days before, maybe a few months before. The car was really nasty. And the e-brake was up when I went to go throw it from the driver to the passenger seat. And it caught on that e-brake and ripped open. And dog food went out all under my seat. No. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man, that's just dog food. And he was like, sure. And I was like, no, seriously, it's dog food. So he threw glove a glove on and stuck his hand under there and pulled out just all this old moldy <laughs> dried dog food. And he went, that's gross. You should clean your car. And at this point, I was like, well, it's my car, dude. Like, I'm I'm cool with it being dirty. Like, (laughs) that's the cop that kept me out on Isle of Palms for like three hours searching my car. He was so pissed that he couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. And he was like, clean your car. And I was like, no. Like, I lived, I basically, like, I worked 24 (laughs) 7. So I had like outfits upon outfits in the car. I had everything in that car. And my trunk was chock full of shit because I was always up and down the road to Greenville and shit. So yeah, like it was a real pain in the dick for him to search my car, and I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing at him and talking shit. And the dude that I was with was like, "Shh, you know, don't do that. Like you, like you're gonna get us in trouble. It's like there's nothing for, like there's nothing. I was like, unless you have something, there's literally nothing in my car. <laughs> Funny thing was, one of the other dudes that had been in the car earlier, because like we were going to hang out with friends on Isle of Palms, and bunch of people rode with me one of the other dudes that had rode with me had actually dropped a half a blunt in the back of the car and i found it the next day (laughs) but the cops did it (laughs) that's all that matters is the cops did Uh, you should have told him he told you to clean out your car you should have told him to search for drugs better oh man loser i think yeah i think i got the dogs called on me once too the only thing that they found was my underwear uh that they decided to 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 nag me about like what are your underwear doing in the car? I'm like, we went to the river. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you holding a man's underwear? Why, Why are you digging through my car on a uh, Sunday? That reminds me of a funny underwear story. Oh boy. My my dad look, this 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 comes full circle. So my dad's a hunter and he always carries toilet paper with him. 
in case he needs to, you know, shit in the woods. <laughs> as you, as and he, you do. he does this because he needed to shit in the woods one time and then realized he didn't have any toilet paper, so he used his underwear <laughs> afterwards to clean himself up. And this is game management, you know, whatever. Anybody can hunt on this property as long as you have a hunting license. He came back a few days later and somebody had found <laughs> his underwear <laughs> and had hooked it to a stick and brought it back to the road. <laughs> so, like they hung it up like a flag, his <laughs> shitty underwear. <laughs> <laughs> See, I went hunting once. And I had to shit in the woods, and I didn't bring any toilet paper. Lucky for me, I was wearing a long sleeve shirt. So I was able to rip off one of the sleeves like Arnold Schwarzenegger and wipe my ass with it. <laughs> and when I got back, my mom's just like, what happened to your sleeve? And I was like, I had to shit. Yeah, I had to shit. <laughs> I just always assumed it? people that did woodsy stuff were, like, cool with using leaves and stuff. No, I guess not. no. Not in Do this not state. Use... I mean, I'm not. I'm not a woodsy person. You're gonna catch me out there doing that. Yeah. So I've never felt me. like a soft leaf. They always feel smooth. So it's just gonna smear it. I'm always afraid that like you're gonna use the wrong leaf. Yeah. And Shit end up in the with river. A rash or something. That's nature's bidet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we don't drink from just any source. <laughs> yeah. People shit in that water. Yeah. I'm not one to of mention all the stuff that lives in it and shits in it. Mm-hmm. And fish. Imagine floating down yeah. the river like, and then here comes just a log. <laughs> here's a here's another fun story. <laughs> oh, no. my, why, why, my dad why was is this the poop episode. I don't know. My, the poop episode, the title. Yeah. My dad was in Cub Scouts when he was real young and he told me a story about him and his friend like to, when they went to the river and you would go up river and shit. Um, and whoever floated, you know, there was always that one kid who had a floater. And that's, that was fun for them back in the... Uh, how old were you talking? He was born, what, before 1960? So yeah. Back in the 60s, you'd shit in the river and the floater was the fun one. You'd watch it float back to your friends. Yeah, take a stick and push it toward him. Yeah, see, and they say, "Oh, it used to be so good back then." No, it's like Mm-mm. it's like worse air hockey. It's yeah. bad. I'd much rather see children with their faces in a phone than shitting in the river and hurting it towards their friends. Ha <laughs> ha! Salmonella. <laughs> e. Coli. Yeah. Mm. Either way, G R O S S. Gross. You've got worms now. I once had a, such a stinky shit, it made my mother have nightmares. Oh, no. Uh, what the f- I just got, <laughs> we just got some bad news from Frakes. What seems to be the problem, Ossifer? Oh, oh, live news. Looks like I'm probably going to miss tomorrow's stream. I'll be in the hospital getting my gallbladder taken out. Yay. Tell him to bring a laptop. I did say that. I just checked. Did he? What? What He said I'll bring my laptop. Oh, word. Yeah, Will can do it. Yeah. No excuses. Yeah, yeah Will gamed with us from the hospital. Little... Yeah, I, 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 I tried to see if he wanted to be on this show today, but he is, he is, uh, out of uh, it. Yeah. Franks, you're going to let a guy with cancer be stronger than you? Yep. Yeah, yes, Franks is a massive pussy. <laughs> He's a gigantic pussy. <laughs> He's a dick. He's a ball sack. That's what it is. Wow. Well, Why I'm we just saying hate... because pussies are strong, they take yeah. they take oh they take a lick and you, keep if on you lightly, take If you lightly thump a vagina, what does that feel like? It feels Probably like, good, right? It feels the same thing as you light lightly thump anything else, as yeah, a po- except no. for a ball sack. Yeah, you lightly thump be... my dick, I might vomit. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the 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 sack you can thump all you want, but you hit one of the balls, that's that's yeah. where the Ooh. that's where the trouble comes from. <laughs> Funny yeah. thing about that, I once worked with a guy named Dan, and he was a skinny dude. <laughs> oh, great <sorry>. story! <laughs> he was a weird little skinny dude that overreacted to everything. Like one time, the freezer went down, and we had fish in there, and you know it smelled bad. But he was like, Ugh. and we're all like, "Dan, shut the fuck up! This is why no one likes you." And then we pushed him down and stole his lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> Bullying's really? real, y'all. It still happens today. Yeah. He deserved it. Apparently, yeah. people named Dan are just natural victims. Yeah. There's so a Dan I don't like out there. 
Who is he? Anyway, let me finish the story. But anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> While we were cleaning one day, my boss decided to take, you know, the wet towel and snap it at him, <laughs> as you do. And it just so happened to get his right testicle. Ooh. Like, on the money. He was on the ground writhing in pain. We're like, oh, Dan, shut up. It just got your leg. It didn't get you your balls. And uh, what ended up happening is he sent my boss a picture of his bruised testicle. <laughs> 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 and then he felt bad after that. He was like... Because he was telling him, stop being a little bitch about it. I just got you in your leg. You don't need to go sit down. Finish to help us mop the floor. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that, my, my, my balls are bruised and not in a, a fun one-night stand kind of way like Terrence told us about earlier. <laughs> but, uh, mm, wet towel. Ouch. I'm fucking dangerous with those. I, uh... I don't usually engage in the, like, people are like, oh, you know, they, they, they're they playing and having fun with it. But, like, Mm-mm. every time I'm going to leave a really nasty well on you. <laughs> so I don't even play those games. You Dude, know the, was... the towels that have the, the little metal ring in it mm. so that you could hang them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That got baked in when I was in high school working in a kitchen. And it was a family restaurant. We had less than a year. And it was my stepsister at the time. And I... Did the, the pop with the towel like I was going to get her. But it was so far away, it was just a joke. But when I did that, that metal ring flew off the tip oh. and hit her in the neck. Ouch. And, like, it wasn't like, she doesn't like, it wasn't anime. She didn't, like, spew blood or anything. But it definitely left a welt. And I was just, I felt terrible about it because <laughs> I didn't realize I'd grabbed one of those towels with the metal ring on it. Imagine if you slit your sister's throat with a towel, how cool you would be. It would uh, affirm that there is a god and he hated her. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> that's how abstract that would have that that death would have to be. Yeah, you were meant to go if a towel ring is what we're putting on your your tombstone. On your death certificate. On your death certificate. Killed her. Towel ring. <laughs> now, when you does anybody have familiarity with a death certificate? Do you get to put what happened, or is that something the hospital does? I'm unfamiliar. What are you oh. planning on filling in? I don't think we can hear mahogany. I said That's I'm fine. unfamiliar. You can't hear me? I can't hear you. You better fucking listen up. <laughs> Alright, we're listening up. I say words. <laughs> <laughs> what are the words you're trying to say? I said I was unfamiliar with oh. filling out death. Oh, thank you. I'm really... You're welcome. <laughs> I just wonder what you're allowed to put on there. Because can, can I put, like, death by tree? If a tree kills you. Wonder. Now, I have to look this up now and see what gets put on people's... Like, would, you, would it say death by tree or death by crushing or death by... I feel like it's going to be something like... Traumatic injury. Like yeah. Something um, specific. Like, something really um, medical. Like, whatever whatever it is to be crushed... That would be the medical term for that. Would be that. All right, let me just go ahead and Google we are funniest death certificates. <laughs> w H Y. Yeah, get on that Google train while you're hosting a show. Yeah, just, just take a break. <laughs> Zone out there for a minute. I'm not zoning out. I'm trying to put content on the table. You were Have biting. You, you were biting your ahead. lower lip and just staring at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> careless whispers started to play in the background <laughs> stop that we can't afford to get dmca huh? <laughs> like we, we literally can't afford have you not heard of dmca oh you play yeah, any yeah. music thanks lars ulrich it's his fault probably because yeah. he was so mad at napster those years ago he tried to sue everybody that illegally downloaded a metallica song well he never got to me baby <laughs> yeah yeah i'm pretty sure i had a you know a fucking Downloaded in legal. Yeah, why are words hard? <laughs> All I know is I downloaded, load, and reload, listened to them once, said never listen to Metallica again. Mm. I never actually got to use Napster. I was stuck with LimeWire. Yeah. And it killed my family computer. It'll do that too. Yeah. LimeWire was a dangerous machine. Don't let your drug dealer back in the early 2000s use your computer either, because they'll download some crazy porn because they're not home. <laughs> just, uh, just a heads up for any time travelers out there. If you if you need drugs in 2000, and you've got a drug dealer who does not have a computer, but you do, 
and he'll say, I'll bring you the drugs you want, but I'd like to download just a few tracks, a couple of songs that my cousin uploaded. That is code for he's about to download some of the nastiest porn <laughs> <laughs> the internet had to offer back in 2000. Well, that's, I don't oh. know. That's, that, that's got to be pretty tame compared to now, though. Like, I feel I found like a, porn has gotten exponentially worse. Yeah, mm. I once found my mother's, or not my mother, my parents' porn because I sat on their remote in their, in their uh, bedroom while they were in there. And the only thing that comes up is a man licking a woman's gaping asshole. And all I can think about is, why, Mom? Why, Dad? <laughs> why do you watch this? Uh, instructional. Yeah. <laughs> well, they claim it got stuck in the DVD player and they couldn't get it out. <laughs> sure. You know, the same excuse I used when my porn got stuck in the DVD player and I couldn't get it out. It's the same excuse I used with the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I, like, I just remember, like, my brother, my older brother used to always leave his whatever tape he was watching... I guess he would just like come and pass out and then leave it in the, in the VHS. <laughs> He's one of those yeah. guys. <laughs> uh, so it would be to... like, you know. My day's done. <laughs> just goes to sleep with nut all over his stomach. My grandma would. <laughs> just crusting yeah, it off the always, I hope uh... your grandmother would whoop his ass while he was sleeping in his nut. I mean, <laughs> she he got away with whatever. He just, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, being covered with crusty loads at all times. I mean, know. mainly like not not so much that. Like he would leave. <laughs> like he would like he would like go to bed, but leave leave the tape in the VCR. Like I would think that's the only that's the only reason why you would not even be like, oh, like I need to take this tape out of the VCR after I'm done. Like it's not because somebody walked in and he was like, oh, like whatever. Like he had all night to get it out of there, but he must have just gone I... to bed <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. Like he's. He's once he's done, he just forgets about it. Oh, um, weird. So yeah, like he would like there would be plenty of times where me, my little brother, my little sister, my grandma just turn on the TV and there you go. <laughs> oh, what was he watching? Just what was he porn. Watching? <laughs> like porn, TM. Porn, porn. I don't know, nineties porn, black people he fucking. People you know? <laughs> Mainly. That's, that's all 90s. That's, that's probably the name of the team, too. Black I mean, possibly. Yeah. Black people p fucking, part 98. <laughs> yeah, possibly, I don't That's know. all there was in the 90s, was all the porn was black people fucking. Mm -hmm. DET had just come out, they had Comic View, and they had all this material they couldn't air on cable, so they just put that shit on VHS. Made well, I mean, b black people had never fucked before the 90s until they saw those tapes. That's what happened. Yeah, no, how did, I don't know how we all got here. <laughs> <laughs> You're like immortal porn, elves. Suddenly discovered know. nutting. Uh <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be a cool idea for a novel where slaves mm -hmm. got an... or slaves or elves... So they don't really, you know, die. So they just get passed on. That'd be mm. a cool perspective. <laughs> well, that'd be an interesting story. Let me say it that way. <laughs> say that shit too loud. Tarantino will hear it and be all weird about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many feet do elves have? <laughs> well, in my universe, they have four. Yes. <laughs> Fucking creepy creepster. That time yeah, I yes. definitely saw you talking and didn't hear anything. Fucking creepy creepster. There you is go. what I said. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Nasty. Again, I still don't see what's wrong with some shrimping. Look, I will mm. leave. I no. will. I will turn this off. I alluded to that joke yesterday. Oh, because we watched um, oh that new Conjuring movie. Uh, Jesse said it. I should watch it. Yeah, it's decent. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely a close-up of some feet in there. <laughs> and I said, look at all those shrimps. And she said, nope. <laughs> uh, was it produced by Tarantino? No. It was like his only his only agreement. There has to be some feet action in there before he does it. Yeah. I... No, it was like a morgue scene. That's what they always show. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the toe, toe tag. tag and... Yeah. Mm, those are those frozen shrimp. I mean, I looked away, <laughs> so I didn't see them, but he mentioned mm. it, and it was gross. <laughs> <laughs> Little corn niblet toes. Stop <laughs> it! The movie's not that bad, though. I don't think I've seen the first two. Or Annabelle. <laughs> I still enjoyed it. 
I don't think I'll watch Annabelle. I don't think it doesn't sound like something that uh, um, like I've seen the real Annabelle doll and it's a huge Raggedy Ann. So I'm, that's all I'm going to be thinking about is watching that movie and the scary doll in my head is going to be Raggedy Ann <laughs> flopping around. I've had my fill of, of toys killing people. I watched the Chucky movies. I like Puppet Master, Demonic Toys. I'm done. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, I'm, that? I'm done. What's that other one where the toys come to life? Little Soldiers? Oh, uh, Small Soldiers. Yeah. Small, Small soldiers. soldiers. That's a great That's movie. a comedy, though, right? I think so. I don't know. People get fucking killed. They oh. definitely kill somebody in that movie. It's been a long time since I watched it. I remember playing the video game a good bit because oh. it, it had a lot of, uh, it was like couch, you know, deathmatch things. Yeah, was it that third person one where somebody plays the soldier and somebody plays the thing with the crossbow? Yeah. The, thing the thing soldier with the always kicked my ass. Yeah. The thing with the crossbow, that was the protagonist. The soldiers were the bad guys, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and they were better in the video game. Yeah, they were cooler in the movie, too. Mm-hmm. Because they all got together and, like, fried people and built machines and shit. Like the orcs from, uh... From what's that game you play, Toker? 40K? 40K? Yeah, that thing. Skyrim? Oh. (laughs) There's not orcs in Skyrim. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Some other races. I was like, they don't have orcs, they have trolls. I love the orcs in 40K. They're they're, They're fun. It seems like the most fun... Because they paint shit colors, and if they believe it hard enough, it happens. Yeah, their magic works to where if enough of them believe it, it's it's real. Which, the kind of running joke is, is that there's so many orcs in the universe, in this game setting, and that they believe that the whole universe should be at war. That's why the whole universe is at war. <laughs> They're the whole reason that that universe even <laughs> exists is because they believe it should exist that way. That's wild. They uh, called the warp into being. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. It's just it's it, there's you know it's been around since the uh, what early eighties. Yeah, I think so. And the 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 lore for that is just it's just grown and grown think, and grown and gotten more and more ridiculous. If you can find an uh, old PDF of the very first Warhammer book, though, it's way goofier. Like, oh yeah, it's super goofy. <laughs> yeah. Don't the orcs throw goblins that explode and shit like that? <laughs> yeah, they do. Exploding so why goblins. would you play any other race? Um, for me, it's the painting. Tyr- I like to paint demons and shit. That's why I play the chaos stuff. Uh, Tyranids. Tyranids are aliens. Those are cool. They're like uh, the HR Geiger army. What are the what are the, what are the Terminator? The Necrons. Necrons. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. You know, See? when you Wait. get into the, the the if you're in it into it for the painting aspect, you just pick an army that looks cool, and that's the one that you play. Uh, if you're in it to win it, you play Space Marines for the most part, because you know they get all the cool new shit every year. Which one has the 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 rat people? Was that 40k or a oh, that's fantasy, the Skaven. Yeah, I like those too. They look pretty cool. There's a whole game for them, isn't there? Or was yeah, it there's Warhammer? a bunch of video. There's a bunch of video games coming out, and um, they've got a whole cinematic studio now but it'll probably be an app you have to pay money for so I don't know I'll, I'll see if LimeWire is around and I can just steal the episodes when they come out <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of video games did you guys see that uh, Dark Alliance 3 is coming out I don't know what Dark Alliance 1 and 2 are Me it was off it was made off of Baldur's Gate it was a coach or a couch co-op kind of like Diablo 2 oh yeah play the games shit out awesome. of those and they're making a third one that's coming out soon, I think. Well, Baldur's Gate 3 either just came out or is about to come out. Well, that's what the first one was. It was Dark Alliance, Baldur's Gate. <coughs> and then there was Dark Alliance 2. Because they referenced Drizzit or Drizm. It's, dri- <laughs> it's Drizzit. It dri- should have been Drizm, though. Yeah, Drizm <laughs> is a sort of a venereal disease you get in Forgotten Realms. Yeah. For pounding too hard. Mm. <laughs> Ah, did you pound a little hard? Looks like you got a case of the drizzum. <laughs> oh, There's the hook for yeah. your side quest. Drizzum no, what, I'm, what I'm working on is the basis of it is something's happened to life. Like, people can't come back. Like, reincarnation's not working. Nobody's being born. Shit's going south. And you guys gotta go to that dead world to figure out what's going on. Dead world. Huh. That could be cool. 
Sounds grim. Yeah. I wonder if it's going to happen. Like, how soon do you expect to do it? I don't know. Like, if you're doing I have it... The monst- I have the monsters bigged out. Like, I, that's kind of how I went backwards. So I chose the monster. Or I chose the setting, then I chose the monsters. That's how I used I, to run. Yeah. That was my Swamp Justice campaign was the first, like, actual Pathfinder game I ran. And it was just like, it's all swamp creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Shit that, shit that we'd never get to fight, you know? Like, just, ha- have I ever fought that? No? Ah, okay, I'm going to run that monster. <laughs> I want to see what it does. And that was fun. Oh, also, I'm really pissed. You know that idea I had about the D&D VR? It's Somebody's done. doing it. Yeah, someone's doing it on Kickstarter right now. Yeah. They heard the show, they copied the idea, and now they're making it happen. I didn't want to spoil you know, your fun, but Josh told me about it a while back, too. I was going to say, like, you know... Just because somebody's doing it doesn't mean you can't do it. Better. Yeah. I mean, or I'm funnier. Bad. Or cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm also. Bad. Like I'm it's, a... it's good to have variety. Mm-hmm. Competition. Yeah, and I can't make video games. That's why I'm doing a talk show podcast. So it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Podcast, the mm-hmm. bare minimum for entertainment. That's true. <laughs> uh, oh, no, TikTok is, I guess. I uh, well, no, TikToks edit, TikTok people edit theirs. Yeah. Requires, some of them do. Some of them do. And some of them are just like, I was walking, like, they just wake up. Here's me camera. watching a show you could watch yourself for, yeah, apparently. for 60 seconds. Oh, did you guys watch Bo Burnham's new special? Yeah. Fuck like, yeah. Not yet. It's great. Great. It's a depression simulator. <laughs> it's got its highs and lows, so I would say it's more like manic depression. Yeah, there you mm-hmm. go. The whole thing with the sock puppets. Well, you're really selling it. It's actually it's 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 no. really fucking good. I think like, I tried I don't to sell you on it Saturday. It's nuanced. We were talking. Yeah. It's nuanced. It's not just comedy. It's not just. It's like I, an art piece at this point. I'm yeah. not afraid of gloom in my comedy. Uh, trust me. Don't worry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite comedy bits is uh, oh, Doug Stanhope talking about how they helped his mother kill herself. That's a good like, one. It's dark and hilarious. It's it's really worth watching and listening oh. to. Yeah. Is that the one he talks about the credit card? Yeah. That's yeah, how he knows no, I know God. the exact one. That's how he knows God's uh, for real. There's an afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> how did my dead mother buy me all this cool shit off Sky Mall? If there's not an afterlife, if she did it three days after her death. That's just... <laughs> You know? <laughs> it's the one joke with a, uh, a statue of limitations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's a uh, beer beer hall punchers. I can't remember the name of the stand up, but it's so good. Beer hall push push. So I'm going to enter a steak cooking competition here in really? July. Cool. I'm going to go visit my uncle, and we're going to load up the cooler with a bunch of alcoholic beverages and enter a steak cooking competition. Nice. Where and when? Virginia. Ugh. No. Sixteenth of July. He lives in Virginia. Oh, so, so it's a t- it's a town over for him. Yeah. So, so the stay will be cheap. Yeah, I'm gonna go enjoy visiting my uncle. Because he told the story about how he went to the state cooking co- cooking competition, and they have these pre cook meetings where like you choose your steaks, and apparently he was the only one with a. Uh, a handle of uh, Crown Royal with him, and everybody else didn't have any drinks to toast with. And how he drank an entire bottle of Crown Royal essentially by himself. The mayor stopped by and gave him a ride to town because he thought he was the only one having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they were calling out the winners, you know, they go from 10th up. When he got to number one, he stood up. But they I mean, he didn't win, but he's like, <laughs> you know, he stood up and was like. On behalf of the real winner, here's he me. Said, he, said, he said his team name, which is just him, by the way. His team was, and number one goes to, you stand up, brushes and bottles. Or Bibles and bottles. And they're Bibles like, and bottles? No. <laughs> and they read the real team's name off when you know, he sits down. He did win 29th out of 38. So, so um, how does you think that makes those other people who lost to him feel? <laughs> they lost that to a drunk, drunk guy. This guy was hammered drunk. But the town loved him apparently. Like they want him to come back every year because he's just the only one having fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna go up there and enter with him and uh, fucking clear out the competition. 
All right. Because uh, well, that's what I do. What are you cooking? Steak. A steak. <laughs> oh, Thank you, you Terrence. Steaks. <laughs> when you first started talking, it sounded like you said you were going to a you state, a state cooking, cooking competition. competition. Yeah. I was like, oh, you're oh, going I'm to sorry. state? That's awesome. <laughs> if you like, listen to this, regionals? If you listen to this show, it sounds like I talk with a mouthful of shit. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry. Uh, so I get so excited and my cheeks swell and close up my throat. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. Addiction. <laughs> the but trick, apparent, the trick but is apparent, to smile whenever you're talking, and you will always have perfect diction. Diction. Huh, I never thought of that. It's true. Smile. Doesn't feel like it, but anyway. <laughs> you didn't give it a chance. I did for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it makes my face hurt. But apparently they're really strict. Like, they want the nine, the 45-degree steak uh, lines, the grill marks. They want that. They want they judge you on texture, appearance, grill marks, and then something else. Taste. Yeah. Taste. T- Maybe. T- <laughs> Taste. Taste. Taste is like a fifth oh. consideration. That's what gets me like that, the, the barbecue thing that happens here in Walterboro. Like there's some good barbecues, but the one that wins, I'm always like, How did you win? It's like oh, the judges. Well, that and it's probably because it has more to do with the, the look and how they did it and the this and the that and I'm like, Yeah, but it doesn't taste as good as fifth place. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not going there expecting to win. I'm going there to get a perfect score and flavor though. Yeah. Like that's what I I don't care about the fucking appearance, because when you grill steaks, when you get grill marks, you're not getting the flavor all the way across the steak. You want a nice crust. Mm-hmm. You want to move that steak over a little bit at a time. So no, they make you grill bit. the steak, and you go up there with a cast iron and just butter braise that bitch. <laughs> I plan on sous vidéing it in, in beef fat. Ooh. Aww. With like a bunch of herbs and garlic, and get it to the perfect medium. This feels like cheating. No, apparently you get several hours to prep and to cook. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's like a 30-minute turn-in window. Hmm. Uh, it's less like the cooking shows where timing's a factor. It's more like how, you know, just, you know, technique, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you'll be but, sufiing while somebody else will be, like, sticking raw steak, steaks under a horse saddle and riding around for an hour. <laughs> yeah, no, something like that. Like, you know, that's their method. And then we have a great steak seasoning at the place I work. It's coriander, fennel seed, coarse, uh, kosher salt, black pepper, and then the secret ingredients, MSG. Because that needs to go on everything. everything better. That's, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you do, that's cheating. I worked at Ladle Soups, and I don't mind talking shit about that place because I'm still banned from it. But <laughs> What, you're banned? I was for a while. That's, yeah. Uh, I had I'm a falling out with the owner. So they don't remember you now. Yeah, I don't, like the I don't CEO care. of Ladles or the one that owned that restaurant or the whole, all of Ladles. All of them. She owned all of them. Yeah, there were only <laughs> there were only three restaurants or two when I started. All right, so if you're gonna tell tell this story. We're gonna find out why you were banned from Ladles. Oh, because I had no called no showed. Oh. Uh, after she pissed me off, that was it. Was it, yeah, she's crazy. And then they uh, ban you from all the restaurants. Yeah, don't ever come to a Ladles again in your life. And I was like, that's fine. I I can make soup. You know, like, <laughs> I know how to I know how to wield a sandwich. You know, I I don't need your store. <laughs> I have teeth, you know. But uh, her, the thing she was proud of was their balsamic vinegar uh, dressing, or balsamic dressing, and it was literally it was balsamic vinegar, it was oil, and then it was the other half of the jar was accent. That was the whole thing, and I was like, that's nothing to be fucking proud of. You're you're cheating. <laughs> That's, of course it's good it's a chemical that every brain goes that's delicious it takes no skill and I use it in everything because it's delicious yeah because it's delicious mm-hmm. It's I use it like I use salt like just a little bit in everything mm-hmm. yeah, just, a, just not probably not in baked goods I don't think MSG should be in there Ugh. really people use it in pastries and shit I don't think so and I think that's why it's because sure it doesn't do. go in there I'm sure there is a way to put MSG in a pastry. I'm curious to look at some packaged pastries and see if it's in there. Monosodium um, glutamate. Well, they will never exp- ex- you know, say it specifically. Because you can get... M- like, it's in tomato skins and stuff. Yeah. So they'll it's say stuff like that. Yeah, that's why I don't like... Was it Sasquatch soap? 
they're talking about like all these harsh chemicals in your soap that hurts your body. We tell you directly what's in it. So the soap companies use the same stuff. They just use like the most basic ingredients of it. Mm-hmm. I hate mm-hmm. that shit. Oh, yeah. you mean Doctor Scratch? Yeah. Just the mm. like the some of the f- the bullshit that goes behind like saying things that like that are not all natural or not good for you. Like sometimes. Sometimes it can be just as good. It's the same thing. It's just the chemical, you know, like it's just broken yeah. down to its chemicals. So, eh. I just don't like those soap commercials that are trying to make me feel like I'm not man enough using <laughs> their, their, oh, you ain't got no pussy in eight years. It's because you're not using dude soap. You know, it's like <laughs> this is a big brown bar of, of manliness here to It'll help hair grow on your chest. It's just like, fuck you. I just don't want to smell like B.O. when I leave the house. Like, <laughs> That's, it smells like pine tar and cabbage farts. Man smells. <laughs> Man smells. <laughs> First off, the best soap commercials there was was the Old Spice commercials. Because it would do something completely dumb and then go buy our soap. Yeah. And I bought their soap. The thing I hate about the Dr. Squatch commercials is they're all fucking two minutes long. And they want to play in front of a fucking YouTube video. Hmm. And now it's time to talk to you about how this episode was brought to you by Dr. Squatch Soap. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, uh, sponsor us. We will, we'll, we'll redact everything we say. Well, no. Anchor already has the ability to get sponsors, but it's by per thousand listens. So if you do a thousand listens, you get 20 bucks because you had the ad in your episode. Mm. No. So when you're doing like 10,000 people an episode... Mm, you know, I'm annoying. just shy. We're just shy of that. So once we get there, <laughs> you know, we're back the yeah. I don't want that chump change. So tell your friends. Yeah, you can take all your chump change and donate it to homebrewdetritus.com slash Patreon. Yeah, um, and you get you get stuff that sometimes. Yeah. Or you could just give us a dollar a month. It's basically nothing to you, and it's a lot for us. Yeah, it's like sponsoring a foreign sick child who is poor and hungry only yeah. it's a bunch of fat guys and one woman <laughs> bro first off Terrence I'm not fat okay. oh god that reminds you... me well that, that we talked about that CVS book on here did we the what the oh CVS no book? I don't believe we no. did okay so we we going to go get our, our vaccine shots. We had to go to uh, what Mahogany has belovedly called a black-ass CVS. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they've got this book section because you have to wait 15 minutes before you leave because you might, I don't know, turn into Godzilla or some shit. Um, but one of the books was called... <clears throat> Let me clear my throat here. A Big Girl's Revenge. Life is good for thick boned Keisha Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I that's, like where this is going. That's the first lot on the back of the book. Those book these books are phenomenal. You should go to a, you should you should go to a black ass CVS and look at their book selection. They're coming to a black ass CVX CVS thing for you. Please continue reading though. I want to know more about Oh that's Miss Jackson. With a good education, well-paying job, and supportive parents, she has everything a young woman could ask for, except maybe a healthy dose of self-esteem. But after a chance meeting with Rico, the neighborhood, and this is in quotes, bad boy. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like a Lifetime movie. Her fairy tale, they basically are. Lifetime movie, the book. I think Ricky Lake made this movie like three times, only white. (laughs) Her fairy tale life is quickly dismantled. Blinded by emotion, she gives in to all his cruel intentions. Oh, Lord. And I feel like at the last sentence it should be, and then Medea showed up. Under the false <laughs> claim of love, Rico ah. vindictively tears down all that good girl Keisha has built. His sole purpose seems to be to make her miserable. Rico has no limits on the grief he causes and the disrespect he shows. Why do you do this to us, Rico? Having endured, <laughs> it keeps going. Keep going. No, no, no. You don't even need to read the book. You get the this whole is just thing. the back cover. <laughs> Having endured physical, mental, and sexual abuse, Keisha finally sees the light, and she's stuck. not having it anymore. The tables are turned, and Rico feels her well-deserved wrath. It ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun, and Rico will soon find out what 
a big girl's revenge truly feels like. <laughs> Sounds like it feels like a bullet hole. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they told you the whole story on the back. I'll ask my sister. She had, she had me buy the book for her and mail it to her. <laughs> so she's like, I'm going to read it when I'm on vacation. <laughs> When's her vacation? I don't Does know. She's a lawyer. She'll probably never no. get a vacation. It does sound delightful and so... trashy. I think but, yeah. we need to buy this book and we need to reenact scenes from it. I mean, you could go to the, the black-ass CVS right here in Walterboro, South Carolina. <laughs> And check what, out their book section. What makes it the black ass CVS as opposed well, to the normal white bread CVS? There's just a bunch of black people working there. The book oh. selection is very um, black. geared towards black people. Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to go with the old uh, right wing dog whistle, urban. No. No. <laughs> no. I mean, we live in a, like, this is a very rural area, I would yeah. think. But yeah, a chock full of black people. So I don't understand. <laughs> what really blows my mind, and apparently, you know, living in the South all my life, I didn't realize this. Black people only really make up about thirteen percent of the American population, and fifty percent of that is in the Southeast. Interesting. That's nuts. So it's like apparently, like I'm, my uncles and stuff. I'm like, yeah, when we went to school, we only knew one black kid in the entire school of six thousand kids. Well, okay, so I mean, like I, I. I uh, I moved to Charleston from Greenville, where there's like you know a fair amount of black people in Greenville. But I moved to Charleston, and I was like, "Where are all the black people at?" I didn't know where. I didn't find them until the first reggae fest, and then I was like, "Where have you been hiding?" No, it's Charleston. Like they just they just don't like. I mean, I get it though. I get why, but they don't. You know, they just there's a reggae stay home. Festival? Yeah, there's several that come to Charleston. Mm-hmm. There's a good one, and then there's the shitty one. <laughs> so, yeah. What are the good ones? Because I just want to go and eat there. I'll let you... Well, the good one is... um is It's more music. It's not so much of, like, a vendor thing. That's the shitty one, is oh. if you want to oh, go... Then I want to like, go to the shitty that's one, That's the then. thing, is, like, the people who are there selling, like, Caribbean food are not Caribbean people, and so they're selling, like... The, cultural appropriation. Yeah, they're se- like, yeah, that's the shitty one, where it's, like, cultural appropriation, reggae festival, you got... Like plain Jane up there playing. <laughs> Is that the one where the white kids with dreads go to? Yeah. yeah, they're the ones making the food, and they got their recipe off Google. And instead of picking the top uh, authentic meal, they picked the second one, and they read the whole backstory before they got to the recipe, so they mm-hmm. they could regurgitate that bullshit to you when they feed you. <laughs> Whatever weird dish it is that they think yeah. is authentic. Yeah. It's like, Those stories authentic. go like, when I was a five-year-old kid, I watched my father take a pump shotgun out, kill my mother, and then shoot himself in the head. Now let me tell you about this jerk chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're generally <laughs> They like to intense. really put in this story, and I just want to know how to make something. There's a website you can go to now where if you copy the link and put it in that website, it will cut the story out and just give you the <laughs> recipe. Oh, that's mm-hmm. nice. Oh, right. thank you. Yeah, that's the girl doing, that's who made that Lord's website work. was like, I did this just for shits and giggles one day, and like now it's a thing. She's like, I'm <laughs> almost going to have to like quit my real job to keep up with this. Mm-hmm. But... <laughs> yeah, I never care about how your family came up with this recipe. I don't. Mm. I just want to know how to make pierogi. It's or... like the 90s R&B music. It's like somebody told told people that that's what people want, and so that's all they'll publish is fucking your grandmas and your cousins and all of like you know you have to have the backstory and all this shit or else they won't publish it but nobody actually wants that it's like i'm i'm thinking about we just watched selena and i was like oh yeah all of that all that 90s r&b music early 90s r&b music was real shitty and because it was just like a bunch of old white dudes in suits saying Mm -hmm. that this is what it's supposed to sound like yeah so, like, uh, you're a great artist, but you have to change your voice to sound like this, and we're going to, yeah, this is that's, what the people want. That's so when I got dis- disheartened working at the radio station, because I was all about, like, wanting to put music I didn't think people had heard, you know, and B-sides to, like, popular shit instead of playing the same mm-hmm. song 18 times. And I'd send, I'd send them a list after list of, like, you know, 60 songs at a time, and they'd be like, well, you could play this one once. And it's just like, dude, fuck you. Like, yeah. 90% of your listeners aren't paying attention. It's the background music at Subway. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's uh, you know, let's cater to the people who actually give a fuck. But no. Yeah, that's, 
Mm-hmm. Stuff Definitely. like Gorilla Radio is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is Are that you... legal? No. No, it's super legal. It's called piracy, actually. No. I liked when I went to my dad's house in North Carolina, like when, um, where he used to live, was right around the corner from North Carolina A and T. But there's just a bunch of colleges in that area. Oh yeah, and there's college a bunch of college radio. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was That's like the closest you'll get to Gorilla Radio. It was amazing. Oh, hungry to try this gorilla radio station. <laughs> Super illegal. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, we're not going to use our name, noob. Yeah, it'll yeah. be like that episode of uh, uh, Malcolm in the Middle where Hal's doing the the gorilla radio, but he's he's literally got the equipment in the truck with him, and he's driving mm-hmm. around so they can't find him so he can spread the word. Yeah, that was a really fun episode. It only it's goes me. like two blocks. <laughs> he's it, getting the word out there. Two it's blocks at a time, It's hosted by Soaker Tith. That's who's hosting our gorilla. Soaker Tith? Soaker Tith. Ah, yeah, Soaker Tith's my favorite host. Smoker mm-hmm. Tith is what you're trying to get. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's your name, but I just flipped uh mm-hmm. <laughs> I just flipped the first letters. He just he just gave it away. I mean you could just say Chris You're Smith terrible. and they'd have a hard time yeah. finding. Come find me. My name's Chris Smith. <laughs> and I'm I Bob s- Peterson. Yeah. I sometimes like to look up like because there's only so many people with my with my first and last name. And so every so often I'll just get online and search my name and see like, oh cool, another one was born. But you can count the people yeah. with my name on now now your hands and, and toes, but it used to just be on one hand and <laughs> two. It's crazy. Yeah, there's not many Terrence Crosbys. There's me, my dad, my dead grandfather, and an NH NFL player, and that's all I know from Michael Ganoes. Mm. I've met three other people with my name randomly. <laughs> I also am Chris Smith. Yeah, <laughs> like that's that's has for real happened. Granted, I, it was it was I was selling peaches on a street corner, so you know. When yeah. Michael Jackson sings, it sounds like he's getting popped by frying fish. Toker, take the show out. You've never made me do this before. Yeah, I have one time. Was it once? Yeah, I know it's not your first time, you lying whore. I think now it is. It. Um. Just remember that if you fuck real hard, those might just be ingrown hairs. It's true. This has been Noob Show. A, uh, a, we are also members of Homebrew Detritus. We have several shows under our belt and a Patreon. And if you've made it through this many episodes, you know, pay for it a little. <laughs> <laughs> All this shit's been free. Give a little donation, you cheap bitch. I mean, come, you not, awesome, beautiful people. Value. I don't know how I feel. If I feel like I can say anything I want because you're not standing in front of me. Anyhow, <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs> we'll break your knees if you don't pay. Yeah, you are you are valued listeners, and we'll cut you if you do not start paying us for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. Okay, bye. Stop. Bye.